Okay, what I'd like to do, I'm going to do uh, just how are you, Fred? So, sir, you're tracking all the uh, RF, all the parts of the request for assistance we got. We sent, I think it was 25 October is when we sent our planning teams to San Diego, Tucson, El Paso, and down here, and linked up with our CBP partners. Uh, we've got in nine engineer companies, Army and Marine, spread across the Joe, and I'll show you where they're, uh, where they're located. The tasks that we have, or the effect that CBP is looking for, is to control access at the ports of entry and deter access between the ports. For aviation, we've got 28 uh, Army and Marine helicopters. We've got 10 Blackhawks in Texas, 10 in Arizona, four CH-53s, and four UH-1s in, uh, in California. And again, the purpose here is, uh, is not really focused on us. It's to give CBP personnel tactical level mobility. We've also got Northcom is running C-130, sir, to give them more of an operational level mobility so that as we collapse agents in, they can move them from one area to the next. So in medical, we have uh, three Roll 2 capabilities, Army and Navy. Uh, the two Army are, are here in, uh, in Texas and Arizona and Navy in California. And again, right now, purpose is treatment of us and uh, NRCBP partners. Uh, military police, we have eight companies, Army and Marine Corps, again, and I'll show you the breakdown for each. Right now, this was the actual request. Right now, our authority is, is really protection of ourselves. And our troops are, in fact, armed, uh, and small arms or handguns only, uh, MPs. And we've got about a, a one to three ratio, MPs to work parties of engineers out working up. Sir, so I'm gonna start west and then move east and end with Texas where we are now. So this is the California sector. We actually grabbed Yuma into that because of distances. Yeah. It makes a lot more sense. It's commanded by Colonel Kyle Ellis, who's the commander of 7th Marines out of 29 Palms, Special Purpose MAGTAF 7. But they've got their task organized with an infantry battalion headquarters, an uh, Army MP battalion headquarters, an ESB coming out of Pendleton, and then an ACE for air four UEs in the west and four CH-53s in the east. So he's got, he's got a task force east and a task force west. What I've listed here is the ports. And this comes from Director Flores, who's uh, CBP's lead for the west. Uh, we've numbered them one through, set, one through eight, rather, in priority on the ports that he wanted us to work on. And the way to read west, uh, we've numbered them one through set, one through eight, rather, in priority on the ports that he wanted us to work on. And the way to read this thing, uh, the plan is complete up here uh, at the top. Plans coordinated with CBP. You guys get that? Whether or not we have class four on site and then the progress of work. So our, our highest priority ports in San Diego, work is ongoing. We had the, we closed three lanes yesterday in, uh, in San Isidro and one lane at Otay Mesa, and that's really to stage our equipment and to be able to move, should we have to do greater closures, move that equipment in place. And then uh, you can see that we're starting to work over here in the Yuma area, and then working back. Some of these smaller ones, Calexico and Tecate, are a lower priority, but I think we're on track really across the board. Sir, you know, this is a bear, 26 lanes for traffic. And so this is, this is Director Flores' major concern, and that's why it was our highest priority. And there's a snapshot on, uh, on San Luis. So on each of these, you see in blue, these are the uh, base support installations where we're getting DOD support. So right here at Pop Don is the only place that we're forward deployed uh, away from a DOD installation. So we're able to support uh, 7th MAGTAF uh, really down here uh, across the border in either DOD or DHS facilities. And in most of those cases, we're co-located. <laughs> Sir, if I can ask you guys to back up a minute, I want to talk about Arizona. Wait, wait, just real quick. I just want to point out, so all of this is risk-based, right, based on intel. So right now, we believe they're going to San Isidro. They're going that direction. We've had some folks uh, 
uh, claim they're going to go to Plexico, so we'll continue to, to integrate with you and make sure we have the yeah. prior position right. Yeah, but it's obviously good. evolving very quickly, which is why the transport for CBP is so helpful. Sir, so Colonel Ellison has complete authority to shift forces within his area, and then uh, General O'Shaughnessy has given me authority to shift across the jaw, really in direct support of CBP. All right. Yeah. Very good. Sir, for Arizona, this is under the leadership of Colonel Larry Dewey, he's the 16th MP Brigade Commander out of Fort Bragg, and he's task organized uh, with an engineer battalion and an MP battalion, and we have a support brigade Midas. They're based out of Davis Monthan primarily, but we have a couple of companies down at Fort Huachuca that are working the easternmost ports. Uh, again, 10 Blackhawks, primarily based out of Davis Monthan, but yesterday we put a FARP in at Ajo, which is right over here just north of Lukeville uh, because that's that's quite a quite a hump yeah. out there to get all the way out there. Yeah. So our highest priority here is Nogales okay. and the secretary would tell you that you know as these convoy, uh, caravans come up along the eastern side of the Gulf of California there's a decision point down here they can punch straight up north through Sonora and go into Nogales or continue on over towards Tijuana. That's why that was such a driver. These are all a little bit more minor, but great work in uh, in uh, Arizona. Now, the, as sir, I'm sure you understand, every one of these is a unique challenge. And of course, the terrain out here, if in fact we, we've been tasked to be able to fast rope and we're bringing in instructors from the 101st Airborne today to help certify crews. Uh, again, it's fast rope of special ops people from uh, CBP. But the purpose where we so might have to grow for border patrolmen, not yes. of U.S. military. That's right, sir. But okay. it's U.S. military crews. Yeah. Our crews are all certified, but we've got our instructors to make sure that they're training in accordance and they're certified Very in accordance good. with our standards. Okay. This is the place where we actually may have to do it. Because in South Texas and in California, the world is an LZ. Not so much here in southern Arizona. A lot of rough terrain, lots of vegetation. And so, and the purpose would be to put their agents on a group of migrants. Dom dominantly, we're talking about between ports of entry, so probably border patrol at that time. And what's your ISR feeds throughout here? So, uh, mostly they're DHS feeds, and they do have Preds up. We do still, through JTF North, we are running both Predator or uh, Gray Eagles and Shadows out of Fort Huachuca okay. that are feeding straight into. Uh, DHS. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> and sir, so uh, so again, this is Arizona. And lastly, I want to cover Texas. Texas uh, was my initial. In Mexico, main you just don't see it being a player sir, in we, terms of uh, crossing points. We no. don't because if you look at if you look at the terrain in order to get to the El Paso, yeah. New Mexico area, they got to go through the Sierra Madres, and it yeah. is tough terrain. And and so CBP actually directed us away from there. We do have a planning cell there. And I have, I have the capability to move folks, folks east or west Very to good. collapse. Okay. General O'Shaughnessy also has uh, strategic level reserves that are on PTDO. Yeah. If we need to add in, we can pull in. So for South Texas, this was initially my main effort. And the, the rationale was this is the shortest distance yeah. to the border. Plus, as you look at the number of ports, this is a little bit of a bear for us. Because there's so many ports out here and we had to work uh, really across the board. You can see uh, the advantage that we have in uh, in Texas, is, of course, is we have a natural obstacle with the Rio Grande River. And so, and then traffic is controlled over bridges, uh, which again is, is very helpful. The downside is when you get, a, when you get, it's not hard to get across the river and it's very easy to move quickly because the terrain is not tough here. So this is, uh, again, you met uh, uh, Colonel Rich Ball, who's our uh, 89th MP Brigade Commander, and under his task force, again, MPs and engineers, we have 10 Blackhawks in direct support. In Texas, the closest actual BSI we had was Kingsville. That's still about a three-hour drive down here, and that's why we worked with CBP. They, this is actually GSA property. The Border Patrol Station is next door. They offered this up to us so that we could establish a forward base camp here. So most of the troops are here. We have aircraft uh, based out of Edinburgh and McAllen supporting directly CBP. By the way, our aircraft, sir, are flying on CBP's ATO. So they're all, they're, everything has worked directly in concert with one air boss. And then um, 
We've also got a support capability just to the east of here, Westlaco, where we've got some of our support structure in an old, uh, we leased an old furniture store, put a fence around it, and that's where a lot of our heavy support, uh, refueling capability, et cetera, is. Some is here and some is out there. And you can see where we are in port status. First, our, our highest priority was right here in the McAllen, Donna, Far areas. We've now worked, shifted, worked over towards uh, Brownsville. Next, we'll go to, to uh, Laredo. And then uh, Director Padilla will, or Chief Padilla will then guide us. Are we going to head next to fill in these smaller ports or potentially move up as far north as Del Rio? We do have permission to use Laughlin Air Force Base as a BSI. So you got about 2,800 in the Texas zone and about 1,500 in each of the other two zones. Is there anything you need that you don't have to carry out with the Secretary of Air Force? No, sir. No, we've got everything that we need and capability to shift back and forth. Okay. And the reason, the other thing I didn't talk about my GIFLIC headquarters at San Antonio, that's about 600 troops. So you've got, that includes, that's part of the 2,800 in Texas as well. Mm -hmm. And we're continuing to planners or what? What's, what's yes, sir. Yeah, it's my design. my uh, normal headquarters. The guys who interface with the Mexican Army. We have reached out and coordinated with uh, Sedena yeah. in this regard. Okay. So all of those folks. Yes, sir. All right. Uh, you have a note on your hardening. It looks like here. Yes, sir. <clears throat> so what I'd like I'd like Colonel Ball to take sure. it over. Here's just an example of one port, so that you get an idea of what we're Very doing. Good. Yes, sir. So again, sir, this is a blow up of the Port of Hidalgo. Uh, we came in in coordination and collaboration with CBP to identify areas where they would like to harden and also to consider uh, impeding obstacles. Yeah. And that's what we did, sir. We uh, did some hardening here on the bridges that also could come into play if and when we have to use other things such as connexes and jersey barriers as primarily concertina wire. And, and where then, are you getting the jersey barriers? I know where you get the wire from. Yes, sir. Where are you getting the jersey barriers? Sir, we coordinated for that through uh, DLA across the service. And a lot of it came from, in this particular case, came out of Joint Base San Antonio. So we got them off of Lackland Air Force Base. Okay. Yes, sir. They painted them so that we give them back to them. <laughs> <laughs> so again, sir, this just gives you a highlight of how we would look at a particular port uh, and do some of the work that uh, CBP has asked us, outlining how concertina area has been laid out, number of uh, or the amount of wire in that particular port, um, and the phasing operations was something that my brigade we just looked at of how we would go to the CBP. So the state and uh, city localities have also been extraordinarily supportive. Uh, both to your team uh, and, to, and to mine, so that's mm -hmm. been very helpful. And you see these bridges, we, we do have contingencies, as you know, we have layers and layers and layers of security built into all of this, right. but we are prepared to block them with uh, cargo containers should the need arise, so we I will see. physically impede the traffic. And you uh, have the forklift, you guys have yeah. the forklift you need. Yeah, to, to and uh, the morale of your troops, short notice deployment, uh, yes, how are your troops doing? Very exceptional, sir. This is the type of thing we train. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. And the uh, mount out went well, went smoothly, or did you learn some things on yeah. deployment? Absolutely, sir. Every, you know, everything is in some respect the movement to contact, and you have to develop yeah. the situation. And we did learn some great lessons learned that I think helps us as we look to multi-domain operations wherever the nation may ask us to go. But here, sir, we have engineers doing engineer tasks. We have aviators flying. We have military police providing force protection, medical assets. So for us, this is training, and it helps increase our readiness. Okay. Okay. Um, anything that you need at your level, I'm sure you're getting everything you need right now. Sir, I am right now. Would I'm you tell me if you weren't? Yes, sir, I would. <laughs> All, right. All right. I don't know how much longer I'd be in the job yeah, after that. Yes, sir, I would. No, you got the job, uh, young man, no problem. And uh, just uh, down here to pay my respects to your troops, too, and, and say thank you. Yes, I, sir. I, they didn't need me wandering around here while they were deploying. I knew that as much as I wanted to get down, but it's good to be down here with you all at this point. Anything else? So, sir, if I may, yeah. um, 29 October is when General Buchanan and I came in and we saw this open field to establish the base camp. On 1 November, the first folks arrived. So that's roughly 13 days ago to what we're going to show you. I want to introduce you to uh, a young engineer company commander who came in, planted her guide yep. on, and said, I'm going to set this place up for sure. us. 
Oh, yeah, Lauren okay. Blake. How you doing? I'm doing well, sir. How's your three-year-old doing? Your oh, mom got him? He's doing well. I bet you're going to get spoiled rotten by his grandma. Already done, sir. Already done. You'll have to put him back on push-ups, young lady. Absolutely. <laughs> um, but uh, thanks uh, for, for everything your family did, too, since I guess your husband already deployed? Oh, well, he went TDY, so he's with HRC, sir, so he's off I and guess. on. We're getting our money's worth out of you guys. We are, sir. So you're, so you're the mayor. I'm the mayor, sir, so welcome to Base Camp Donna. Yeah. If I can, I'll kind of orient yeah, you to I'll where just, I go. I'll just wander with we'll, you. we'll do it once over the world, and then we'll go to the true here in the camp. And those are soldiers right, making this work. So, sir, you came in here in the entrance gate. Right, you're talking about here. We're going to continue down, sir. You know, you'll see our fuel point. But a nice laundry and shower that we have from the field. Keep going, sir. We have some additional support elements that have been able to come in, make sure that we can be connected. We have hot showers, that was the best, second best day ever. And as we continue around, we have that field hospital that we have with our roll two. We have been very fortunate enough, USO and APs dropped down yesterday, so a little bit more to grow this base camp, make sure our soldiers have some a little bit more uh, from home. In the far area, you'll see 48 GP memes, or that's uh, where the bulk of our soldiers are living right now. And we can talk about some of those conditions as we walk and go, sir. Um, to sweep around to continue back north, this is a large motor pool area. This has been the main funnel staging area for all those line haul vehicles coming in. So continue around, sir. Uh, directly behind you, you see the large tent. Uh, that also holds approximately 400 of our soldiers in there right now. Continue around, we see a large staging area for the class four that we have that will go out for the fort, sir. <clears throat> so again, we want to go see the real heroes, which are the soldiers that are making this work, sir. So we can do a once over the world and go meet some soldiers. Okay, that sounds good. Do you have any questions? No, uh, my pleasure. Nice Thank you for you everything. We so greatly value your partnership. Yeah. Thank, where, you. Where, Thank you. Where are most of your soldiers who compose the team that you run this camp with? Where are they out of? Out of Fort Knox, sir, okay. with the 19th Engineer Battalion. So, okay. by choice or so providence. You got the choice, yeah. We were the first to drop in, and uh, we, made it, we made it home. Okay, well, let's go wander Absolutely, around. Absolutely, sir. <clears throat> Colonel, on the uh, putting of the large wire, I know we're going to take it down. Thank you. So uh, we just have to remember that part of the piece. Uh, we do we need to so maybe we'll want this part wire right up or what? Oh. Big piece of Sergeant Fraser right here. 
He can talk to you a lot in depth about how we provide showers, how we provide laundry, some of those things that really uh, bring soldiers uh, the morale and happiness for uh, make sure they smell good. Yes, that's great. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, do you want to step aside so I can show you how the operations work? I am. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, so as, as the customer comes in, uh, they'll direct one of our soldiers here at the table. Uh, that soldier will then uh, get the, the soldier's laundry bag. They will dump the soldier's laundry, uh, laundry onto the table, and they will inventory together. The customer as well as the soldier will make sure every uh, piece of item is accounted for. It goes into one of our mesh bags here. Let me see that. Uh, just once the mesh bag is filled up, it gets zip tied up. Each mesh bag has a bundle number. That bundle number will go onto the laundry slip, so when the laundry goes into the machine, when it comes out, we can identify that soldier's bag so we know which laundry it goes to. Uh, the machine's on the outside, I'll show you that here in a minute, but uh, once it goes up there, it gets washed, brought back in here for re-inventory. So they'll go through the bag again, make sure all the items are accounted for. Once, once we have everything is tracking, we seal the bag and we put it in a tin on the outside for storage, so when the person comes back inside, we can track to the book and let them pick up and send out his laundry. Uh, I got to show you the machine out here to show you how, how that works. Thanks. Uh, I'm the guy you're supporting. Uh, okay. 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 Careful, 
those couple of dips out here. You got it. Soldiers, how you doing? Hi, everyone. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Secretary Nielsen, he's the Secretary of Homeland Security. He's my okay, call right. For the Homeland. Generally, you and I deploy overseas so that he doesn't have the problems in the Homeland. You know what I mean? Yeah, we, we go overseas, we go Afghanistan, Iraq, and, and that sort of thing. You do it well. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, we do. But in this case, we were asked by the Secretary due to the number of people coming this way to back them up. What does that mean? It means that her people do all the work, but we're standing behind them as a confidence builder uh, and that sort of thing. Put in the, the uh, deploy the various barbed wire so that their people can handle it. That's how we back them up, okay? Now, there's all sorts of stuff in the news and that sort of thing. You just concentrate on what your company commander, your battalion commander tells you. Because if you read all that stuff, you know, you'll go nuts, you know what I mean? Uh, you know what your mission is here. You've had to deploy on short notice to a non-traditional location and do your job. So you focus on doing that. But the secretary and I are here also to answer your questions. And it's going to get real weird if she and I are looking at you and you're looking at us and no one's talking, you know what I mean? So we look for two qualities in NCOs, initiative and aggressiveness, right? So who's got the initiative and aggressiveness to ask Secretary Nielsen or me the first question here? Because we don't forget about you guys. Go ahead, young lady. How you doing, sir? Um, I have a question. Uh, I just got my promotable status to become a non-commissioned officer. Got your what status? Promotable status to become a non-commissioned officer. And my question to you, um, what, what piece of advice would you give me when I become a non-commissioned officer? Yeah. To excel in my yeah my career. My background was in the infantry, and young officers either make it or break it there and elsewhere based on their NCOs. It's that simple. So as I watched good NCOs over the years, they were always people who learned that once they became an NCO, they couldn't be the buddy-buddy anymore. But they also didn't want to become a tyrant. They were a player coach. You know what I mean? get the image, you can play the game, you know the game. That's why we're promoting you to NCO rank. But at the same time, you're coaching everybody else to stay winners. So they can do their job. They have what they need. They have the guidance. They, uh, if they mess up, you're the one who sits down and coaches them back onto the on the straight and narrow. Because not one of you wakes up and makes it, how can I mess up tomorrow? You know what I mean? That doesn't happen. But you need NCOs down there as your player coaches. So I think if you always work on the success of your subordinates, you'll always look up and your boss will look at you and admire what your troops are doing. And it's just one big team. You know in the Army, you don't care if you're male or female. We don't care where you go to church or if you go to church or anything like that. We just care when there's trouble out there, will you keep the faith? Will you ride for the brand? When trouble looms, you go toward the trouble to help your buddy. And as long as the NCO sets that example, you just remember, don't ever let it be old. It's an honor to be an NCO. So don't ever start making, like, kind of like, well, I've done this for, you know, a year now, kind of same old stuff. No, it's not. The young troop that just checked in doesn't know what he or she's doing yet, you know? So take care of your lads and lasses, okay? Best thing I can tell you. Other questions about anything, young, young guys. Uh, I don't get to see you all. I've kind of grown remote from you and the secretary she and I are out of Washington DC and 
we stand before you today with mixed emotions. She and I are so happy we can cry right now. <laughs> <laughs> Which, uh, yeah, go ahead. Sir, what would you say is the, the biggest thing you missed from the Marines since your transition into the civilian world? Oh, good question. Yeah, that is a good question. So what's the biggest thing I missed? You know, I, I grew up at age 21, I was overseas. I was sent to lieutenant in the infantry, sailor and marine, coming off ship, dealing with sailors and marines to do a shore. And it was just the, um, none of them really cared that uh, someday I'd be the same trader. You know what I mean? It was just, you know, you're the lowest ranking officer, you're out in the mud with the troops, and there's an honesty to it, there's a clarity to it, and, and frankly, uh, I still miss those days, you know. Uh, but it was a building experience for me because we're there, the loyalty only matters when there's a hundred reasons not to be loyal. You know what I mean? I mean, it's when it's raining and you're cold. It's when you're in a position where people are showing a lack of respect for each other elsewhere and you and your team are holding strong, you know? Nothing can shake you. Nothing can shake you. It's whatever you commit each day to what you're doing. This country may not be perfect. But it's still, you're going to have to go a long way to find a country more willing to look itself in the eye and say, we've got to improve here. And I always point to the eye. Let me tell you something. Where's the first time a man and a woman, a black man, a Native American, where's the first time they all voted as equals in our country's history? Anybody tell me? You ought to know. In the U.S. Army, on a long-range reconnaissance patrol, under two young captains sent by Thomas Jefferson to the west coast of the United States when he was president. You know it as the Lewis and Clark Expedition. Now, this country's never been perfect, okay? And we'll never accept we're good enough. But the U.S. Army, the way you treat one another, the way we respect one another, you are an example for our entire country. And when the Secretary decided that her Border Patrol needed help, she came to us. Not because of me. Look, I had to rent a suit to come down here. You know? <laughs> no, because of you. Because what you are every day. And that's what I, I miss being around it. But it is pretty humbling uh, to be still part of you. I, I did it for 40 some years. I thought I was doing good out there on the West Coast, but I flunked retirement. You, know? <laughs> you guys, I used to look this good, by the way. Back day, you see that? I you used to look still good. do. Yeah. <laughs> what else? Thanks, so. Well, I just want to say thank you while you're thinking of another uh, good question. We are forever thankful for the partnership of each and every one of you. Uh, DHS has an amazing collaborative relationship with the Department of Defense, whether it's for natural disasters, whether it's for cybersecurity, whether it's for fighting the away game so that we don't have to fight the home game. Uh, and then certainly border security is national security, and we all together are taking this very seriously. So we are honored to partner with you. We are proud of you. I want to thank you uh, on behalf of DHS, both my parents uh, were Army, most of my uncles, most of my cousins, they all taught me the uh, power and the honor and privilege to serve. So I thank each and every one of you for what you do for this country. Thank you. Uh, all right, you guys take care of each other now, okay? Cool. All right, well, we're going to move on. i got to go back to port, but you yeah. carry on now, okay, guys? <laughs> so we'll continue on. Sure, and Mayor. Sure. There's another. Okay. Do you have 
folks that are from uh, from this area. So Good point. Point. Yes, there are a number of soldiers within my own units. They understand, understand the weather. weather. <laughs> they understand yes, the man. weather. So it was really interesting. Uh, yeah. What is it? Yeah. Six yeah. days ago, I think the temperature was like 96 yeah. here as we were yeah, working. Right. Yeah. Then we had uh, some strong yeah. rain for a couple of days, and then the temperature yeah. dropped yeah. over the last few yeah. days. Yeah. 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 Good question. You know, the engineers have been putting in these wire obstacles. You can have to take them out. 
at some point. We'll see what the secretary says, okay? For right now, the mission is put him in and help the troops. Yes, sir. Uh, but uh, one thing about the U.S. Army, we give you a mission, you'll do it, right? Oh! Yes, there you go. I mean, that's something, uh, I got 40 years in somewhat smaller branch, but we know what the U.S. Army does. We'll let you know, okay? Yes, sir. We're, uh, other question. You're not getting away that late. You've got to be more than one, you know, right here. Uh, what are the short-term and long-term plans for these operations? Yeah, I'm going to short-term, right now, do get the obstacles in so that the border patrolmen can do what they've got to do, okay? We don't want them being injured, something like that. But a piece of wire could have kept someone far enough back and couldn't chuck a rock at them or something, okay? Uh, but longer term, it's somewhat to be determined because if we were in war right now, you'd be asking the same question: what, what's the short term, what's the long term? When you're in something like this, it's dynamic, unpredictable. People want illegal access. Very cold. Those who want to come in legal. My mother is an immigrant. Okay, she told me how how hard it was to get into America. So believe me, we want legal immigration. That's part of what makes America good. But illegal, we're going to carry out the law, and that means we back up the border, uh, border patrolmen who are on the front line. And we'll just have to see what, what the situation develops in, and then we'll get you an answer, okay? But remember, there's nothing we're going to ask you fine young men and women to do that the U.S. soldiers didn't do 10 years ago, 100 years ago, 200 years ago. You know what I mean? Well, keep the faith in each other. Listen to your NCOs. Do what your officers tell you. Okay? And then we'll get through this one. Anything you want to say about that? It's just that we're, we're watching. You know, we're similar to all of your missions. It's based on the threat and the risk. And you know, we're watching that. We make good contact. We have all the customs of operations work that, as you know. We very much appreciate all of the engineering work. Uh, so we'll continue uh, to work on that. But, you know, do you trust me? We have uh, we are required to secure the border. That is the most important thing a country can do for itself, is to ensure that it has a sovereign border. At the same time, we facilitate legal trade and travel. So it's very important that these sorts of entries are able to continue to function no matter what happens. So you all are helping us with the security piece, so we can do both of our missions as we go forward. Making sure we have that impedance and denial, uh, which you all are very familiar with. We need that on the border, so we'll make sure that the flow is orderly and safe. That's for the protection of the migrants, for the protection of our officers and agents, and to ensure that we can have a border that's efficient and effective. So we thank you for your partnership always. We greatly, greatly appreciate it. I just mentioned how many different ways that we can partner with the Department uh, of Defense. Uh, we are right there with you. So we're with us. We greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Well, you know, the Secretary said that we're talking about every day. She and I are talking every day. Our staff are talking to one another. It's a very close uh, bond. And you remember that because it's nothing different than I learned when I was 21 years old wearing a uniform. You got to talk to each other and keep the team together. You know what I mean? And so we're doing it at our level. We need you to keep doing it right down here. And every border patrolman out there deserves the best effort we can give them. Okay, that's, that's what we owe our, our, our brothers in arms and sisters in arms. Okay? Any other questions? Yeah, go ahead, Tucker. Go ahead. Uh, so I'm going to be that guy. Is there any chance I hope we can get a photo of you in the secretary? Oh, crying out loud. <laughs> <laughs> Have to get ready to fire for this. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't we step down to the sun and we'll get a photo? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Let's do it. Yeah, we did it. Yeah, we did it. We were taking that off. Yeah, we did it. Good to see you. Thank you. Okay, everybody around it. Sorry, sorry.
of uh, making these roads, okay. sir. We, uh, we're trying to improve the roads for the base camp so we can have the fueling operations so can, as well as offloading the vehicles as they come in. Okay. So yeah. Now, are you going to gravel them eventually? Or? Eventually, if we get the gravel. So, yes. yeah. so we'll see how long we're going to be here. And once we figure that out, then we'll... No, right. So right, now, yeah. right now, we're trying to get that stabilized base down so we can put the gravel on top yeah. of it. Really. Very so, good. Yes, yeah, so well. Very good. So what were you doing when you got the call to come down here? We're, we're planning a, a field training exercise. So we're about to go on a field training we exercise. We just gave sir. you the best you field gave training exercise. You gave us the best field training possible, <laughs> sir. Yes, you did. Oh, boy, so that's we're, great. we're getting ready to move out, and then we got the call, and we had to change gears and get to going, sir. That's good training. Sir. Yes, it is. And who, who are uh, you? I know you've been around. Wow. 19th Engineers oh, yeah. now. And, uh, I know you're saying oh, Very sorry. good. So, uh, troops, how are they responding to it? Very well. It. Yeah. Very well, sir. What a great, great training. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. It really is. Again, this is one of we the first could not times. have had a better training event than, than something like this, but they've actually got to go and do it. they got to stay environmentally 
down, they got to make sure it works. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, they're doing great. Very good. Very good. And you get you, they stay in harder. Yes, we got it. All right. It was very cold and windy last night, so they got to taste it. That's good. <laughs> good. Built the character. It does. Old for you, right? Absolutely. We're uh, you getting everything you need from Yes, we are. Yeah, 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 all right, very good. Uh, so, bottom line is they'll be able to maintain, sustain the operation while you call for yes. because people like as long as yeah, yeah. the doing and the troops here. This is what actually allows us to do this. And when the border patrol calls for something, uh, we're able to put the barriers up on footnotes, all that sort of thing. So, uh, well done to your troops there. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Appreciate it. Appreciate you being on the ground, sir. Uh, it's our honor. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're quite happy to be here. <laughs> Sir, man, Lauren will keep us walking that way. All right. Sir, so on DLA, sir, you know, even though it's DOD, uh, we actually have to pay for that uh, when we get barrier material. Right. And right now, that's coming coming through, being uh, funneled through my uh, Army North's budget. We're working it, sir, and you're, uh, you're capturing all the costs. Yeah. Sure right. It's always better to come down, General, and see it for real than read through for the reporting and things, right? Thanks, sir. Every morning we're getting it. Yes, sir. Well, I think, uh, you know, we're, it's it's a tight partnership at the port level, you know, within the sector, within the Border Patrol sector, at the operational level, and even at the strategic level. So it's no, uh, no friction. Yeah. So are we getting ready to depart at this point, Yes. Could, I, could you and I just walk off? Yeah, 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 sure. This has nothing to do with the border. Okay? <laughs> no, sir. Uh, you guys are DCs or DCs? Thank you. Good job. 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 
Okay. Can anyone general?